What makes a good horror story? Is it the dread as a heroine opens the door of an old haunted house? Is it the excitement of battling creatures that only come out in the dead of night? Or is it the darkness itself that lingers long after the story ends? Come with me. Let's visit the neighbor everyone tells you to stay away from. Welcome to Shake, Rattle, and Record. Manananggal, released in 1984 and directed by Peke Galiaga, opens with a harana. Herbert Bautista, as Douglas, rehearses the song O Ilaw at sunset with Kajo, a friend he hired to be his backup guitarist. If you're not familiar with the harana, it's a night serenade, done in the early stages of courtship. It's how we used to formally announce the intention to court a woman in the comfort of her home in front of her family. In a traditional harana, a man sings a love song right outside, usually underneath her window. If she opens the window, that's a sign that she's interested. If she doesn't, then better luck next time. The Maniliga or suitor, can have backup singers who either play instruments or provide backing vocals. Douglas actually hires his friend Kajo to play the guitar for 20 pesos. The word harana comes from harana harocha, a Spanish string instrument, so it makes sense that string instruments were very popular for this. Douglas and Kajo make their way through the thick forest, They pass a young boy with a lazy eye sitting on a carabao. The camera lingers on his face and there's a look of dread there, as if he senses bad things will come upon the duo. Kajo whispers, Tabi tabi po, once the full moon comes out. A dog howls. Kajo complains. He was, after all, only paid 20 pesos and it's Webe Santo, Holy Thursday, so he should be at home singing the Pashon or something. Instead, he's with the bespectacled Douglas who is hell-bent on serenading the woman who lives in a hut deep in the forest. The woman's name is Anita, and that's also the title of the clip you heard in the beginning. Anita is the third track in the digital album dedicated to Shake, Rattle, and Roll Manananggal by the local metal band Punebre. Check out their links in the description box. So Douglas and Kajo get there, and Kajo immediately gets a bad feeling. He's been in this forest many, many times, but has never seen this hut. Inside the house, something bubbles. Kajo's had enough at this point, so he returns the money to Douglas and gets the hell out of Dodge. Douglas, unfazed by the lack of a backup guitarist, begins to sing O Ilaw, popularized by Ruben Tagalog, a singer born in Iloilo in 1922 who had a popular radio show in the 1940s. According to Florante Aguilar, classical guitarist and harana enthusiast, quote, in musical terms, the rhythm is habanero, which is in two-fourths time. True harana songs place the singer in the act of serenading, such as when he implores, Dungawin mo hirang, look out the window, my beloved. Natutulog ka na basinta, are you asleep, my love? Or, o ilaw, sa gabing madilim, o light, in a night, so dark, unquote. O ilaw, sa gabing Wangis mo'y bituin sa langit O tanglaw sa gabing tahimik Larawan mo neneng of course, nobody talks like this anymore. This is archaic language, but that's part of the charm of it. As he's singing, the woman in the hut opens the window, and when he finishes the song, she steps outside with a makeshift gesera. He doesn't approach her, though, and heads back home. This actually violates the harana protocol, as the serenaded is supposed to respond, and they should also formally say goodbye, but anyway. While Douglas is walking in the forest, he hears the flapping of very large wings overhead. He clutches his guitar as it stirs up the wind, and somewhere in the distance, he, he hears a scream. 
This sequence is confusing as we cut at least twice to the full moon against the black night sky. But as Douglas is walking back after the Harana, there's still some light out as if it was shot the same time as the opening sequence. To be fair, that's probably what happened and they just shake, rattle, and rolled with it. Eventually, Douglas stumbles upon Kajo's guitar on the forest floor and then Kajo himself, bloody and deceased. He then runs into his younger brother, Gio, who is looking for the pet dog, Sausage. The creature continues to fly overhead. Douglas and Gio run home to their grandmother. They tell her that they are being chased by an aswang, which she confirms when she looks outside their window and sees the flapping of giant wings. She makes the sign of the cross, closes the window, and places a palaspas near it. She was actually miffed at Douglas for using it to fan himself, telling him not to play with it. The palaspas is a handheld implement made of palm fronds woven and braided into various designs and adorned with colorful ribbons. Elmer Nocheseda believes that the palaspas predates the arrival of Christianity. Early Spanish chroniclers like Pigafetta observed altars decorated with palm fronds when they arrived. Churchgoers purchase the palaspas outside the church on Easter Sunday and have them blessed during the Mass. Then it is taken home and hung in the house to ward off evil spirits. Now that isn't a strictly Catholic tradition. Like many of the rituals we associate with Catholicism in the Philippines, this is actually a folk belief that was repurposed when the religion arrived. When the palaspas has dried out, it is usually taken back to the church to be used for the following year's Ash Wednesday. So this is what we see for a couple of seconds on screen, a woven testament to over 500 years of history. After the break, we'll find out what their grandmother knows. The truth, they say, is out there. Trouble is, the truth sometimes can be bland and uninteresting. Subscribe to Dark Theory. Dark Theory is a self-produced Philippine podcast that takes you down a rabbit hole of mystery, conspiracy, and dark, twisted tales that blur the boundaries of what you know to be real. Subscribe to A Little Darkness. Listen to Dark Theory, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Anchor. We make the truth a tad bit more delightful, all with a pinch of darkness. This is Dark Fury. Ang tala ng ama, ng anak, ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Paginong namin Diyos, Panginoon namin Diyos, bantayan mo po kami ngayon, bantayan mo po kami ngayon, na iligtas, na iligtas, sa lahat ng mga kasakunaan, sa lahat ng mga kasakunaan. Douglas, Gio, and their grandmother pray together, after which their grandmother explains that they must rid themselves of the manananggal, who preys on children. She tells Douglas it's his fault because he serenaded Anita, the woman in the hut in the forest, whom she calls Maligno. Also note that she tells Douglas to go buy a lot of salt. Their grandmother is played by Mary Walter, and this is not her first brush with the Manananggal. I'm pretty sure she was chosen for this role for precisely this reason. In 1927, Mary Walter played the Manananggal in the first ever Filipino horror film, a silent film directed by Jose Nepomuceno, and produced by Malayan movies. Unfortunately, not much is known today about this film, but a critic named Jose Quirino wrote, Even with the crudest equipment, Don Jose Nepomuceno was able to conjure camera tricks. In one scene where Mary Walter, in the title role, and her fellow Manananggals appeared to be half-bodied before a coffin, Don Jose had a portion of the ground excavated. The actors and actresses who portrayed Manananggals, therefore, were filmed buried up to the waistline, Subsequent editing made them appear limbless to terrified moviegoers. The next day, on Good Friday, Douglas comes across several men in costume preparing for the Cenaculo. The Cenaculo are plays depicting the passion of Jesus Christ, his trial, suffering, and death. The term Cenaculo seems to be unique to the Philippines. Scripts derive from both the Bible and folk tradition. Some productions would use rope to tie their actors to the cross, while others would use actual nails— 
Tangentially, there's another Holy Week ritual, the Penitentia, where penitents would carry heavy crosses and self-flagellate for hours to cleanse themselves of sin. Some of them would be nailed to the cross as well. So, Douglas is accosted by the man playing Jesus, asking him where Kajo was. He was supposed to play Pontius Pilate. The man playing Longino, Longinus, the Roman soldier who pierced the side of Christ, said that he could do it. But the man playing Jesus tells him he has to play Longino until he dies. That's how a panata, a vow, works. I have no idea if this is true. Anyway, they tell him to go find Kajo. But Kajo's dead, so he just keeps his mouth shut and buys the salt his grandmother told him to. At this point, Anita, very much human, appears and starts following him into the forest. They pass by a single man doing his penitentia. They pass by a single man doing his penitentia, and this was, at this point, the creepiest thing to me because this is very strange. A penitentia is done typically in groups, in public, but this was just one man in the middle of a forest. Later, though, the same man tells Douglas to go home because God is dead, meaning it's past 3 p.m. on Good Friday, and also because the forest is sacred. That's interesting because, again, throughout this film, we keep seeing folk beliefs right alongside Catholic elements. The man also tells him that he has nothing to fear if his faith is strong. I'm inclined to believe that this man isn't human but an angel sent to Douglas to encourage him before his big battle with evil. Now, we cut to Black Saturday with Anita rubbing oil all over her body like a one-step skincare ritual for mythical monsters. This is actually the scene I remember most from the movie. Black Saturday is important because it's the one fall day in the year when God is dead and spirits are free to roam as they wish. This isn't the only movie that uses this timeline for horror, of course. I specifically remember the 1996 film Takot Ka Ba Sa Dilim, starring Angelo De Leon and Bobby Andrews. Incidentally, a manananggal appears in that movie too. Douglas watches as she oils her body, which then contorts, sprouts wings, and separates at the waist. Looking at it now, they manage to make this transformation scene very sensual and primal at the same time. The lighting is all over the place, but the sound is on point. Anita's upper half flies off, shrieking into the night. There is an amazing shot of Irma Alegre looking into the camera in alarm and distress, framed by her wings against a backdrop of the jungle, light from an unknown source illuminating her hair and face. It's pretty magical. Douglas then sprinkles holy water over the half-body. I don't remember him getting that, by the way, but sure. Or at least I think it's holy water, but seconds later, a fire starts. So was it gasoline? I don't know. The Mananangal's lower body struggles, the feet beating against the banana tree as the fire spreads, the intestines scattering on the forest floor. Gio, the younger brother, picks this unfortunate moment to wander into the forest again to look for Sausage, their dog. He really needs a leash. There's another shot of Irma Alegre here, her beautiful face in the middle of tree branches, bat-like wings flapping, her movements fast but graceful. That's the photo on the cover. At this point, I'm kind of convinced that she's the best Mananangal in cinematic history that I'm fully prepared to ignore the lack of lighting continuity. The Mananangal chases Douglas and Gio back to their grandmother's house where Douglas attempts to fight her off with a palaspas. It seems to work because she flies away, but she comes back and just attacks their house in a blind fury. She almost kills them, but when they realize that the sun is rising, they drag her towards the sunlight. She dies in a flash of light just as the sun rises on Easter Sunday. The film ends with Gio and his grandmother burning a pile of leaves as Douglas is limping around. The young boy with a lazy eye rides in on his carabao, you know, the boy from the beginning, to bring back Sausage, who is whining with his head in a sack. Seriously, you need to leash that dog. The boy asks Douglas, what are you burning? Douglas says, nothing, just a manananggal. The burning pile gives off one last violent puff of smoke, and the neighbor whistles, or Ilaw as he disappears back into the forest.
What strikes me most about Manananggal is how seamlessly it draws on Filipino culture, so much so that if you don't pay too much attention to it, you don't even realize the amalgamation of cultures and beliefs that lives in these 45 minutes. The Manananggal is a mythical creature that predates Catholicism. We know this because similar creatures exist elsewhere in the Malay world and in Southeast Asia in general. For example, in Indonesia, there's the Pinanggalan, a floating disembodied woman's head with its trailing organs still attached. As you can guess, they come from the same root word, tanggal, to remove. There's also the Krasue in Thailand, the Malay in Vietnam, Hap in Cambodia, Kasu in Lao PDR. So if you're ever at a loss about what the diverse nations of Southeast Asia have in common, well, we share this very specific fear of a woman's detached upper half out hunting for human prey in the night. In this segment, though, we see Catholic prayers and symbolism being wielded against a pre-colonial mythical creature, an indigenous palaspas blessed by a priest on Easter Sunday, a man self-flagellating in the name of Jesus Christ in a forest he calls sacred. This is Filipino identity in a nutshell. Influences so intertwined it's impossible to tell where one begins and another ends, giving rise to a whole that is more than the sum of its parts. There's a good reason many critics put this segment in their top three. There's just something so quintessentially Filipino about it. But the segment, written by Oro de la Cruz, takes place in the province, where sights and sounds abound in the moonlit night. With urbanization, the Manananggal too moved to the city. More on that in the next episode from Shake, Rattle, and Roll 4, Madre, directed by Peque Galiaga and Lore Reyes, starring Gina Lahar and Aiko Melendez. This is your host, the ghost in the bathroom at your high school everyone always talks about. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to follow Shake, Rattle, and Record on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at SRR Podcast. I'm Agas Ramirez. Scare you next time.